In Missouri alone, um, the average software engineer makes over $81,000 a year. Mm -hmm. um, the shocking part is there are over 9,000 computing jobs open every single month that are on field. Mm. And less than 5% of high school students are currently pursuing computer science by the time they graduate. Wow, wow. I came here very young. Mm. I came here uh, at the age of 16 wow. by myself. My wow. parents are like, this? Wow, Good luck. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah. So uh, for me, straight graduated from high school. Wow, 16, yes. all alone. Yes, all Jesus, alone. Jesus, that just didn't hear. I just, <laughs> took me a minute. Took me a minute, like, wait, 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 wait a minute. My brain did not connect to 16. Yes. Okay, wow. 16, all, all alone. alone. Yes, and, I mean, they dropped me off the airport. I do this for the young girls, mm. and I do this for uh, the young ladies that look like myself and feel like they are not able to achieve something. I want to show them that it is possible, that mm. you can do it, and you have to see someone that looks like you do something for you to believe that you can also do that same thing as well, and I hope I become that person for the youth. Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Zeke Wangana. Today I am in downtown Kansas City talking to a founder who is using gamification to teach kids how to code. I know you parents and teachers out there are trying to figure out how you can get your kids to be able to learn how to code. Well, this founder has figured it out. It's made it more fun to do it in Kansas City. So join me as I meet with the founder of Codago, Triumph here. Let's go. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. What's up, Cedric? How you doing? Good to see you. Man, how you doing today? Doing pretty great. How's your day going? Yeah, it's going well. It's going well. Where we at? Where we at? Where we we at? are at Messenger Coffee, one of the best places that we come to work here with our Colago product. Yeah, favorite coffee in the city. So. Sweet. Cedric, nice to meet you. You know, we weren't on the interview, so nice to see you in the, you know, normal Kansas City area. So. All right, let's grab some coffee first and then we can start the conversation. Sweet, so before I go in and get anything, what do you, what should I, what should I go for? What should I go for? I'm a big latte fan, latte. so I always get the caramel latte. That's just caramel my favorite. Latte? Yes. So that's yeah. What do you like? Oh, the iced chai latte is probably the best you'll ever find. Chai latte. But might have to do pe rock paper scissors, whichever right. wins. Which is if you like it sweet, chai, you're going my way. Chai. Caramel latte it is. There we go. <laughs> do you ever get any pastries or? I love the Queen Amon. It is sweet, mm. it is soft, it is crispy. It's just, it has everything in it. I love it. What about some croissant? <laughs> croissant. I do love croissant. But I feel like I've had way too, croissant. too many croissants. Croissant. Exactly, right. croissant. <laughs> so we switched to the Queen Amon. Queen Amon, okay, okay. I'm gonna have to, yeah, I'll get that and try it, you know. I'll, it is I'll pretty try. good. And look, it, it also looks like a crown. If you kind of yeah. take a look at it, it looks like a queen's crown. Okay, I mess with it, I mess with it. Okay, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a croissant and uh, a croissant. A queen, queen Amon. The Queen Amon. And then get me, get me some uh, caramel latte. I just pick up the pace and I violate. I eat it all up like a dinner plate. What's up, good people? Welcome back to Student Entrepreneur Season 2. I'm your host, Zeke Wanganga, and your favorite storyteller around the city. On this show, we dive into the journeys of successful entrepreneurs to uncover the steps they took to creating and scaling their company. By the way, I'm excited about the episode because the lady I'm about to bring on is my sister. Not blood, but motherland, baby. You know you know what I'm talking about? As you know, there's no BS on this show. We bring real people with real stories and actionable steps. So listen closely. So there's lots of controversy around what some people call iPad kids. But what if I told you that with that technology, your kid could be a future coding genius? Today, we're featuring someone who has gamified coding. She is also in the 2024 Lunch KC cohort. Speaking of Lunch KC, shout out to Lunch KC for sponsoring this episode. If you're an early stage tech startup looking to level up your business and get 50K in funding, go apply to lunchkc.org. Now help me make welcome to Student Entrepreneur, the CEO and co-founder of Kodago, Triumphia Hombie folks. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to have you on. Absolutely. You're looking fantastic. I love the outfit. Thank you. So are you. Thank you. You know, you, you know, gotta take it back. Gotta take it back. Representing. You know, you, you know how I love we do, that. You know how we do. I love that. How's your day going so far? Pretty good. Pretty good. Busy, but pretty good so far. That's Excited. It's Friday. Yes. 
They're the best. You know, it, we're about to be done and we'll be out of, be out the way. Exactly. So, um, thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thank um, for having me. Before we get into the questions, because um, a lot of people are very interested about your company, mm -hmm. but I want to tell a, a short story, uh, which might date me a little bit. Right. Um, but it was just a short story about the first time I played video games, right? Um, the first video games I was able to play, uh, I think it was um, Sega Genesis. Nice. So it's going to date me a little bit. So, um, but I remember my brother were the ones who were playing. I think in Sega Genesis, they had a, like a gun where you could shoot things and stuff like that. So I was very intrigued by that. Now, fast forward to today, I play FIFA. And by the way, no one can beat me in FIFA. So <laughs> wherever you are, if you want to challenge me, pull up. Oh, I'm going to okay, show you how okay, it goes. Okay, I don't play around. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, I was very interested in video games. I'm still interested in video games. Um, if I had a you know a video game where I could learn how to code, that would have been made me a genius today. So Absolutely. bringing it back to your company, right? Yes. Um, tell the people a little bit about Kodago, um, what, you, what your company does. Does. Absolutely. Thanks for the question. Yes, um, well, definitely. Codago is an educational platform that teaches kids coding right. um, through gaming. Um, as you all know, um, there is this misconception of coding being super complex and being hard and boring. So we are trying yes. to break that by making it more exciting and fun using the power of gaming. Okay. Um, yeah, speaking of coding being boring and hard, um, so I was in engineering school when I got to the U.S. Nice. Um, I took, uh, I think it was, um, uh, I forgot what the class was, but it was about coding. Um, and our last, the final project for the class was to turn um, a sound by a waveform into a picture. Wow. I'm like, <laughs> like, what? What are you talking about? All you showed us how to do was code in Excel. Now we're doing what? So, um I had to, you know, have some friends help me with it, but I did not know that was I was like I was mind blown when the picture came out. Like, oh, what? Right. So being able to have an application that makes it easier. So can you dive a little bit deeper? How does this application work in terms of how do how do kids code with it? Right, absolutely. So the whole landscape of Code Algo was built upon Kansas City. Okay. So as you get into the world, first of all, you are immersed into an environment that you're already familiar with. Like you mm. said, downtown Kansas City, yes. and you see a lot of these famous buildings there, including the library, the Kansas City Library as well. And um, as you get into the environment, you have characters into you have characters in the environment that are called NPCs, okay. non playable characters. Okay, okay, okay. And um, these NPCs, the only language they speak is coding. Mm. So you have to learn the language in order to speak with them. Mm. And the way we currently have it is currently set up to be a single player. However, okay. as we grow, the goal is to eventually make it a multiplayer platform. Okay. Um, so specifically what would you say the problem that Kodago is solving? And how did you triangulate that? How did you get to that in terms of your resource or how did you find that problem? So uh, the crazy thing today is um, in Missouri alone, um, the average software engineer makes over $81,000 a year. Mm -hmm. um, the shocking part is there are over 9,000 computing jobs open every single month that are on field. Mm. And less than 5% of high school students are currently pursuing computer science by the time they graduate. Wow, wow. Now, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is, well, why are we having all this problem? Well, that's because, one, there is that misconception, which is making kids not even pursue that field. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do here is to make coding available to elementary and middle school students so that by the time they get to high school, they can actually make sound decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to allow them to make six-figure salaries by the time they graduate from high school, which is not only going to help our local economy, but can potentially help the national economy as well. Wow, dang. So there is there's deeper data when it comes Absolutely. to the actual job market of a product, like in the economy in general. Yes. It's not just trying to um, get kids to play video games to code, but no, it's the future exactly. of what it should look like, you exactly. know? Because um, I know that, you know, uh, eSports, you know, there's a lot of uh, Twitch, there's a lot of uh, gaming going on online. Right. Being able to infuse that in a way where your kids can learn that. Because, you know, I think the the fear that my parents had back in the days of, of us gaming was being able to get in, get addicted to it. Yes. And then not doing <laughs> any other thing. Right. And um, my But that was a good thing. If you are addicted to the right game. The right, right game. Exactly. Ex the right game that would, like, what you're doing right exactly. now, right? Exactly. An educational um, game. Right. So... Um, my brother, my other brother, he probably won't watch this, but if you do watch this, I don't, I don't mind. I'm just going <laughs> to tell the story. Um, but the story around town was my brother. So back in Nigeria, the electricity is not stable. Oh, right. Hey, I'm from, I. So you know what I'm talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Yes. I'm from Benin. So I completely understand what you're talking about there. So it, it can go like months and you don't have yes. electricity. Which is insane. Yes. And then back in the day, so my brother would take his video game back in his backpack and be Traveling around town, like on foot, 
looking for electricity. So wherever he could find electricity, he would stop and play the video game. So there was a story around the time that he, his, uh, uh, the, the flip flop he was wearing was so flat because oh he had God. walked around the whole town trying to play video games. So that wherever is some he dedication. Dedication, I mean, like, that's what I mean when they say don't get addicted. He was addicted. So shade on you, but whatever, you know. But, you know, if you are that passionate, just imagine what, you know, that kind of passion. But he ended up becoming an engineer. Nice. So that's a whole different nice, thing, right? Nice, but right. it's like, being able to have that kind of passion for gaming and being able to use it for coding, just imagine what a kid could do with that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, the crazy thing is the average uh, kids here in the U.S., they spend about eight hours a week playing video games. Yes. And if At the can, minimum, I would say. The minimum. If mm. they can only spend five minutes on that, of that, on code algo, mm. my goodness, they can learn problem solving skills, analytical skills, yes. critical skills. They could get skills that could allow them to not only get internships, but potentially lend them six-figure salary jobs, or even get scholarship by the time they get to they graduate from high school and wanted to go into college. Mm. So this is definitely a path that I do see a lot of kids taking. Yes. Especially now that, you know, technology is booming in such a way. Exactly. And now is the time to get in, if not yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say, uh, I think the most engaging video game I ever played was like GameCube, like 007. Nice. And like, you know, driving around and stuff <laughs> like that. Um, but on the business side though, who is your target audience and how did you define, come to that? Um, the definition. Right, so we target kid-centric organizations. Okay. Um, so think about uh, Big Brother Big Sister, think about We Could KC, any organization that have kids. We also target private schools, they okay. have kids there as well. Okay. And also um, homeschooling, parents that have kids that are in elementary or the middle school stage. Okay. Um, that is currently the target that we are starting with. The goal is to hopefully get to the high school level as well and potentially even beyond that. Sweet. So then how, who pays you? How does this revenue model, how does that make money? Who pays you? So we have a SaaS platform right now. Okay. So uh, the way a code I was set up is that you have um, users. So in this case, um, parents will be the one that we're paying for it on the homeschool level. Okay. Um, organizations going to be, uh, think about directors, CEOs, and then like school, we are going to have um, superintendents and principals. They are going to be the one making a purchase uh, of the, the SaaS platform that we have, which is a monthly uh, payment for parents, but for these organizations yearly. Yearly for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense because I could see this thing being able to be something to incorporate into their classes, into exactly. their um, curriculum. Um, I'm going to tell that funny story because <laughs> I have so many stories about coding and the computer stuff. I love it. So back when I was in elementary school, Mind you, I was going to elementary school, which was right right next to my door. My mom was a teacher back in the day. Nice. So we were supposed to have computer classes. I don't know why my mom would have found this dude. <laughs> he went into the market and bought scraps of computer parts. Right. So we never actually ever turned a computer on. He was teaching us how what, what the keyboard was, what the nice. mouse was. Okay, the hardware part. The hardware part. Again, there's no electricity to plug in there, so we only learn, we, we only learn oh, yes, the hardware. We have to start somewhere, We have right? to start somewhere. So we start with hardware, we never got to software, so we never got to actually use a computer. Uh, but that's a whole story for another day. Uh, but let me ask you this though, on again, bringing it, bringing it down, right? How do you validate, you know, that the customers actually need this in terms of the market? So, um, first of all, I'm a software engineer mm -hmm. and the team is entire filled with software engineers. Okay. So, uh, being in the industry ourselves, we understand the need and how major industries are always looking for software engineers. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to that, when we started doing our customer discovery, we really noticed that there is a huge, huge, huge demand in coding uh, for kids. In fact, uh, even more and more government agencies are trying to make it now requirements that mm. kids should learn how to code. Okay. Um, I know now it's becoming more um, a requirement at the high school level, but elementary and middle school is definitely something that is picking up. Okay. Okay. So we perform multiple rigorous uh, customer discovery. Um, one of the major ones that we did, we did one with Lean Lab Education and also the National Science uh, Foundation as well, NSF, okay. uh, to truly understand the problem. And before we even start building something, is it really something that people actually need? Okay. And the data that we got from interviewing teachers and uh, students, um, uh, superintendents, principal, and all those different type of bodies we were able to actually get the answer that we needed. And even till today, 
as we build and as we continue to iterate, we do make sure that we iter uh, we involve teachers and students to make sure that what we are building is in, in fact something that is needed mm -hmm. by the market. That's, yeah, that is the value. Because I, I wanted you to talk about that because I, I keep saying this on the show, but it's like, if you want to start a, a company or product, go to the consumers, yes. go to the customers, ask them questions, get your surveys done, make sure you are actually solving the problem that they need, not what you think. Exactly, need. because it is super easy to feel like, oh, the solution that you're building is what they need without actually talking to them because, of course, we all have great and brilliant ideas. Everyone right? has ideas. But until you actually talk to your customers, Everyone has ideas. you don't know if this is, in fact, a solution that they need. And um, being uh, a pretty heavy tech team, mm. it is definitely, it can be a very uh easy mistake to make because mm. we are builders at what we do like software yeah. engineers you yeah. just build 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 yeah but we had to really take a pause um and take a good amount of time to really go through that uh uh in investigation interview to be able to make sure that what we're actually doing is indeed what the market needs so in that same market perspective how do you scale this how do you plan on scaling it to like the next? Like right. Year? So um, right now we are starting local. Okay. We are starting here in Kansas City. Sweet. But it being a SaaS platform, being online, uh, it is going to be natural for uh, people from other states to be able to access CodeAlgo. Okay. And um, the way we have the platform built right now is just a single user platform. However, as we grow, the goal for us is to turn into multiple a multiplayer platform, okay. Okay. which is going to allow even more collaboration. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm very competitive. So <laughs> there you go. I would like to you compete. Can call you know? your friends and say, hey, let's go hop on CodeAlgo and play this video game and uh, check out the coding skills. I, I think that would be it for because I, I don't, <laughs> My thing is, you know, I, I like to compete. I just want to compete. Right. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what I it is. I feel like it, it isn't everyone, but if you <laughs> see these kids too, yes. just them going crazy about, oh my God, I need to I need to beat this person. I need to be the best at this. Um, and if they're doing it in a healthy fashion, yes. it is always exciting to see. No, there's always, healthy competition is always advice. Right. I'm like, bring it on. Right. Because right. in competition, you get better. If you get beat down, you go home and think about exactly. it. Exactly. Like, why? Oh, and why? then, you know, like, dissect it and make sure that next time you get better and then you beat that person and then you're at the top and exactly. if you don't go back and do it again and you come back prepared exactly so um take me back right so you you had a you've had a tech background yes how did you get in tech when did you get in tech and why so uh i got in tech uh i would say by luck or fate okay. however you want to call it okay so um as you know i'm originally from benin yes hey, representing. yes yes yeah Rep <laughs> representing Hello. motherland which is in west africa so yes. i migrated here west about, side hey <laughs> i would say about 13 years ago okay. And uh, I came here to study uh, finance, international business economy. So okay. definitely was not uh, familiar with coding, computer science or anything like that. Um, and uh, upon graduation, that was when it hit me that, OK, well, the job market mm. for immigrants in the US mm. when you don't have a tech background is extremely challenging mm. and having someone that can actually sponsor you with a non-tech degree is almost close to impossible that's, it's very right. very challenging mm. so i was faced with few options one go back home join the army or look uh, for uh, a stem path well mm. of course my mom as soon as she heard that is you better come back home right now mm. but as stubborn as i am i decided to uh explore the stem path mm. um coding was what i stumbled upon and uh taught myself how to code, mm. went back to school for my master's in computer science, got a degree, and then went into uh, uh, the industry and became a software engineer and uh, practiced that for uh, several number of years. Um, and through my time as a software engineer is when I noticed this disparity is, uh, first of all, one, being the only black person in my entire uh, um my entire classroom when mm. I was going to school, mm. um, and also the only female, which that's not surprising. And that also followed me through my entire path as a software engineer as well. Uh, my entire career, really. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty pretty interesting when you when you see yourself being not only the only female, but the only black person in a field that is just so lucrative. You start mm. asking yourself, well, why don't we have more people into this field? Mm. And that's how the questions, we just started asking myself that question again and again, and noticed that, okay, well, the problem is that we're just not exposing coding early enough to mm. kids, and that's how Kodagu was born. Mm. Um I want you to dig deeper because, you know, being a Nigerian and coming here in 2016 and being able to go through school, right? Um, and for me, you know, I was in that engineering path and I switched to finance. 
but it wasn't, again, being stubborn and being able to say, like, hey, I'm not going back home. I've built something here. I want to continue with that. Um, for you, when did you come to the U.S.? Uh, 13 years ago, I'll say, two, what was that? Was 20, 20, 20, 2010? 2011. 20, 11, so about, yeah, 12, 12, 13 years ago now. So talk to me about that. Who was Triumphia before coming to the U.S.? And then what was that experience like for you coming here? The interesting is Triumphia has always been an entrepreneur spirit person. Mm. Uh, she's always been this person that always wants to invent and create things. Mm. Um, in fact, I come from parents, uh, entrepreneurs, parents. both mm. of my parents are entrepreneurs. And as you know, back in Africa, there are a lot of entrepreneur yes. parents back there. Um, so I always wanted to build something of my own. I just mm. didn't know in what. Mm. Um, and uh Finance is definitely something that is very, very famous back in Benin. Accounting, finance, um, French, I feel like French speaking countries, that's the number one major that you always advise to go for. Uh, but so I can make it in Benin then? Absolutely, you can. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't something that uh, I was very passionate about, yeah. it wasn't something that I, I was very keen mm. to. So, when I came here and uh, found myself doing this major, yeah, it's true. My parents want me to, you know, get this degree and yes. uh, come back home and make this thing happen. Um, but I then realized that the passion wasn't there for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was a little easier for me to make the switch to actually find something that I actually became passionate about. Mm -hmm. And today turning into a business. So wow. an entrepreneurship spirit has always been something in me. Um, but I think now I'm trying to flourish that more. Yeah, so fast forward, you go into uh, computer science. Yes. Talk about being the only black female in those classes in that environment. What was that like? Like, you know, I being asked this question, what was that experience like for you? Like was, you know, what did you feel at that moment? I would say lack of diverse uh, uh, thoughts mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. um, diversity is one thing too, but, um, Diversity in thought is something that we don't talk about a lot. Mm. Um, it's a predominantly white industry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, being uh, not only only female, but also the only black person in the classroom, um, even at the workplace too, it's, uh, it's something that keeps on, it just dawns upon my, me and I just keep asking myself, why don't we have more people in this industry and um, people that look like me in this industry? And there are problems that deserves diverse solutions. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, when we have this solution being coded by a specific group of people, well, we are not really taking into account another section of people. And I feel like if we have more and more diversity in this field, it's going to help uh, solve those problems yeah. in a more appropriate way that it should be addressed. Yeah, yeah. Um, so tell me from you asking these questions of how can we make this field more diverse? What was the timeline bef between those questions and thoughts and ideas be going into, let's make a game that mm -hmm. can help kids learn how to code? What was that ir 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 like irritation, like yeah, iteration to, right. to where you are? Um, from school to the workforce, uh, I would say COVID happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when COVID happened, uh, and this thing's just been daunting over and over and over. And then I finally told myself, well, unfortunately, during COVID, I lost a lot and lots of my friends, mm. super young uh, people. I mean, a lot of them wow. were like in their teens. Some of them were in their early 20s. So then I started asking myself, well, I'm not sure if I have enough time on this earth. If yeah. I do have people that are, you know, similar age group as me just going that's this quickly, then I may as well achieve what I need to achieve right now. And yeah. that's how yeah. I decided to start working on Coralgo mm -hmm. um, and uh, where it is today. So tell me, so the idea came, when did the idea come to make it a gamified thing? Like how did the idea come about? Uh, I would say right around, 2018, 2017, 2018. Okay. Um, because wanting to bring a topic that is so complex to kid, you have to make it fun in some way. You have exactly. to make it engaging in some way. True. Otherwise, everyone's going to leave the room, <laughs> unfortunately. That's true. So uh, just going through different ways that we can actually make this happen. And then I started asking myself, well, how can we make this fun um, without making everyone sleep in the room? <laughs> That's how we started exploring different gaming. I see, okay, uh, okay. Gaming that we can actually incorporate. Um, 
look at how Mario is and look at how Roblox is and mm -hmm. look at how all these different games, uh, they're actually, uh, you know, engaging kids, not necessarily uh, in an educational way, but what actually makes them uh, fun mm -hmm. and uh, using those type of mythology to be able to apply in a topic that is going to be super. I'm at the top, that's one, not two or three. This real life, baby, don't make believe. I just make it look easy like ABC. I'm on it 24, 7, 25. Eight. Shout out to Casey Sourcelink for sponsoring this episode. If you're a business owner looking to find resources to grow your business, definitely go to caseysourcelink.org and get the info. Oh yes, right? it is indeed the queen. All right, sweet. So, sweet. So, tell me the significance of this space. Because I know you know you guys have been working. I know Cedric for sure. You frequent here a lot. Um, tell me about the space for you and what this kind of means to your guys' company. Yeah, well, I mean, for the most part, I like the environment, the openness of this environment, especially in a time of COVID where we're all locked down and in our apartments. My apartment has one window. This one has floor and ceiling windows and feels like you can think and breathe much better. Yeah. In addition, um, being able to communicate with other humans. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love uh, being able to work and relax at the same time. Yeah, know? and I mean, there's also something to say that, you know, not being in your house and being outside gives you that fresh perspective, right? Um, and on, on your side, Triumphy, I know that in the app there's features and stuff that actually talk about the coffee shop. What are those, what are the inspiration of the coffee shop to your platform? Yeah, so, um, Developers, software engineers are known as just big coffee drinkers. So, of course, the platform is for kids. Yeah. So the way we're representing it is by calling it a cocoa shop. So we know kids cannot buy or drink coffee, yeah, but yeah. they can drink uh, chocolate, hot, chocolate. Yeah, hot chocolate. They can yeah. get pastries. Yes. So that is why that representation is there. And okay. one of the main reasons why we have characters that looks like donut, that looks like croissant, yeah. that looks like a coffee cup exactly. and a coffee mug and etc. Yeah, um, yeah. And the goal here is to truly immerse them into what it truly means to be a developer. Yeah, wow, okay. So, wow, that's bringing the culture in the game itself, exactly. you know, like giving them that ahead of time though, you know, coffee shop is kind of where we have started this idea. Um, so tell me this, as I know, you know, when we talk about the openness of the space in terms of what other benefits, because I know, I think my thing was being able to know that as an entrepreneur, you don't have to have a building, you don't have to have a space to start. If you have an idea, you can start at a coffee shop, you know, find your person, start brainstorming, come in consistently. You don't have to expend a huge amount of money, right? You know, talk to me about all the benefits of being at a coffee shop, you know, the networking, like kind of, the, what kind of people come to, to Messenger, you know? Oh, I mean, in Kansas City, this one location, I've, I've met the mayor, I've seen the uh, women's KC Current soccer team. Wow, okay. I've seen so many different entrepreneurs, and yes. that, that's been the number one benefit. As uh, first, our first uh, startup, you know, we've been able to make connections with both the financial and just the uh, similar-minded people yeah, that all in this space, all in this level, let alone the other two. <laughs> Yeah. Stuff, so. so I mean, you know, that to say, as an entrepreneur, find your coffee shop. You know, find your place where you start at. You know, I think coffee shop is a really cool way you can be able to. The people are pretty much here to network. You know, if you can find a um, a time to be able to have a conversation. What have you seen to be the most effective way to start a conversation in a coffee shop? You have a you have a secret sauce. <laughs> To start a conversation, I'll, up, you, know? you know, I always ask a silly question like, hey, do you know how to fix my, <laughs> or you know the Wi-Fi password? You know what, back, that's a good that's, one. <laughs> Wi-Fi password, that's, that's a good one. one. Got a wife, and then they're like, oh, I can actually show it on my Apple. Oh, yeah, so what do you do? What do you, what do, you do? Why are you here? What are you drinking? Exactly. Um, and also, by the way, thank you for the Quinnable. bun. I finished it already, so I'm, I'm going to take a bite. It is the queen, indeed. I love that. I love that pastry. I'm at the top, that's one, not two or three. This real life, baby, don't make believe. I just make it look easy like ABC. I'm on it 24, 7, 25, 8. I just pick up the pace. So, I definitely want to ask, why is it so important to incorporate Kansas City? And what are the different locations you've already put in the, in the, in the app and you are looking to put in the future? Absolutely. So, one of the main locations, of course, uh, we have a coffee place yes. uh, called the Coco Shop. Uh, we have the Kansas City Library. Yes. 
Um, we have the famous football stadium. And uh, a very important location we're planning on adding is 18th and Vine. And as you, as you can tell, we are African-Americans and we are wanting to bridge the gap between African-Americans, software engineer, allowing them to come to the field. So being able to have that location within the platform is going to be a huge impact for us. So that anyone else that happens to be African-American going to the platform can see themselves as they play. Yeah, yeah, I think that's unique too in the sense that you want to see yourself immersed in the experience. Exactly. Like what you usually see around you, make sure that this is for you. Um, and I think that's crucial. Um, and I love the fact that you use Kansas City as the start location so that you can be, oh man, I, I know the library. I know 18th and Vine. I've been there. Exactly. What? So that makes the kids' imagination even grow that further. So when they're in real life, they can be able to charge it like, oh, actually, I can actually do this on the game. So I think that is so cool, especially for the culture, right? Being able to use 18 and Vine, that whole stretch is so, I think it's so magnificent. You know what I mean? So I think. I think it's, it has something impactful to a child's brain, you know, to show them what is possible. So um, thank you for, you know, um, bringing the culture into it. I think that's very inspirational as well. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for bringing me into your experience, kind of where you work. And, you know, showcase the other side of being an entrepreneur. You know, it doesn't have to be in a very um, uh, space, like an office space. It could be um, more unconventional like this. Exactly. And just find your place, right? So thank you guys for what you do and, you know, being able to bring me in. And I'm, I'm going to continue with my coffee. So... Awesome. I'm gonna see y'all much later. I'm at the top, that's one, not two or three. This real life, baby, don't make believe. I just make it look easy like ABC. I'm on it 24, 7, 25, 8. I just pick up the pace and I violate. I eat it all up like a dinner plate. Makes sense. Okay. So I know you talked a little bit about, you know, why you do this, who you do this for. Can you dive a little bit deeper into, you know, looking back? For me, I know personally, yeah, I have a whole village back home that whether I know it or not, there's some kid out there looking up to me in yes. the future. And whatever I am doing is to be able to create a legacy that they can be able to say it's possible yes. um, in whatever field it is. For you, it's technology. For me, it's storytelling. For me, yes. it's being able to create different companies and show regardless of whatever skills you have, you can be able to be the best at it and create a path for yourself. Mm -hmm. So for, you know, the young triumvir or someone out there who, who do you do this for? And, and like, what's the why behind that? I do this for the young girls mm -hmm. and I do this for uh, the young ladies that look like myself and feel like they are not able to achieve something because they don't have the appropriate mentors or they don't have um, their appropriate experience or no one to really guide them through it. Um, I want to show them that it is possible that mm -hmm. you can do it. You just need um, you need resiliency yes. um, and uh, you need to be able to set goals and you can definitely make it happen. You have to see someone that looks like you do something for you to believe that you can also do that same thing as well. And I hope I become um, that person for the youth that they can see themselves through and hopefully achieve their own dreams as well. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. Um, that is, that's so inspiring. Um, man, I, I I, I, I felt that because, you know, f for me, I'm always a person who looks up to people who are doing amazing stuff because I always believe in each one, teach one. Um, with that in mind, by the way, um, do you mind if I do a segment by consultant? Absolutely. I'm going to I'm going to cheers for you. You know, I'm going to I'm going to cheers for you for the people <laughs> who would do it for. Hey. For those who would do it for. There you go. Yes. <laughs> I'll drink on your behalf. Awesome. Awesome. Thank um, you. Thank you. So let's change gears a little bit. Lunch KC, right? Yes. Um, before we even get to Lunch KC, tell me some tools or resources you use to go from tech industry to start your own company to now pitch into different organizations and winning funds. Um, I would like to give a huge shout out to Lean Lab Education. Mm -hmm. When we first started with Code Algo, um, we didn't know where to go. We didn't have uh, we didn't have any funding. Mm -hmm. um, all we knew was we had to do some research to be able to even see if this is something that the industry wants. Yes. And Lean Lab Education, they were uh, extremely helpful uh, by providing us a platform that will allow us to show their basic idea to different schools. And through those schools, we were able to get firsthand uh, feedback wow. from the students, from yes. the teachers, from the principals of what they actually think about the platform. And yes. then we now took those um, feedback and turn them into what it is that we have today. Of course, went to multiple iterations. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the number one, followed by NSF, National Science Foundation, i -Corps program that we went through. Okay. Um, locally here, actually, uh, in uh, it is in Missouri, um, Rolla, Rolla University was okay. who we went through. Um, uh, 
Pure Pitch Rally, I would say they were the biggest, um, the biggest wow factor that actually put our name out there. I mm -hmm. think some people have heard about Codago through just regular word of mouth, but with Pure Pitch Rally, we were able to make an actual bigger presence. Mm -hmm. um, and that was when we got our initial funding. Mm -hmm. And that funding was extremely helpful because mm -hmm. through that, we were able to not only complete the initial phase of our research, but also gets graphic designers that helped put together the graphics. And of course, since we are all group of software engineers, we were able to make that happen. Mm. Um, uh, followed after a pair pitch rally, I would say the biggest one that we had here local in Kansas City is going to be Launch KC. Mm. And mm. I mean, their support, their connection, their funding that they've dumped into Code Algo, uh, it's extremely helpful and making it what it is today. Uh, through their help, we are going to be able to launch our multiplayer platform okay. um, wow, here nice. soon. So fingers crossed on that, we're working mm. on it. Um, but yeah, the entire, I would say, ecosystem Pipeline mm, um, mm. is also a big one as well that's been help, helping us as far as entrepreneurship is involved. Okay. So for you, were you was Kansas City the first city you moved to or did you move here a while Yes, back? yes. Kansas City. I've only been here in Kansas City. Oh, wow. I know. Um, wow. Moved directly from Benin to Kansas City and been here the entire time. I've traveled to many other cities, always told myself, you know, one day I'm going to move, but never did. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? So I'm still Me here. and you both. <laughs> Me and you both. I'm like, one day I'm going to move, but we're still here. Why are we still here? I know. I don't know what is it with Casey, but I'm I like, know. I'm going to leave someday. Someday hasn't come I, yet. It hasn't come yet. And you know what? <laughs> with a lot of, with these opportunities that we're actually getting more and more here in Kansas City, uh, Kansas City's home. Definitely mm. don't see myself leaving anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely grateful for the, uh, I would say, the love that we receive yes. um, from the people here. Um, and definitely do see ourselves staying here for a long time. I definitely know it's not the weather that's making you oh, sick. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, Especially compared from to where I'm from, absolutely not. <laughs> no, they definitely not the weather. I think it's like there's something to say about the Kansas City people who yes. are in Kansas City. The people yes, the who are Kansas really, Cityans. they're yeah. genuine people who really want to help. I agree. Um, the grassroots people are really yes. there to champion you on and help you with resources and get you to the next step. Yes. Um, if you find the circle you want to be in, you find people who are willing to be able to help you elevate. Yes. Um, so... Talk to me about, um, did you know about LLC or all that? How did you figure all that out? Like the business side of things? Talk to me about that process for you. Right, right. Um, so we went through, uh, we went to this company called SCORE. Um, SCORE, they have multiple business developments okay. for uh, brand new startups okay. that are wanting to uh, learn how to start a business, how to put together a business. Um, so then, um, in addition to Prospect Business Association, mm. I can't believe I forget them. I would say big, 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 big shout out to yes. Prospect Business Association. Association, yes. especially Miss Simone Curls. Mm. I mean, her impact on us has been tremendous. Um, the fact that we are here today is going to be a huge thanks to her. Uh, her, the different people that worked at the Prospect Business Association, they have been beyond helpful as far as business structure, making sure that our legal's in place, making sure our financial makes sense, mm. making sure that what we're actually doing makes sense and how we actually communicate it makes sense to the people as well. So uh, to anyone out there wanting to know exactly where do I start, Prospect Business Association. How much That's you pay them for all this service? Zero. Wait, that what? Zero. That so is, what? That is the beauty. Wow. Okay. Absolutely zero. It is a non for profit, and their mission is to help businesses, especially underrepresented businesses, okay. to be able to launch their businesses and guide them through the entire process. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, uh, Prospect Business Association, you better yes, pull up. Yes, AKA PBA. PBA, better pull up. <laughs> it's, it's Simone, I'm there, looking at you. There you, know, you go. You know where we're at. <laughs> um, man, that's awesome, though. So, Let's let's uh, shift gears a little bit. Um, a lot of people have ideas. They want to do this. They want to do that. For you, what do you think was so strategic in helping you go from idea stage to actual business, and now you're a part of Launch AC? Research. Mm, mm. Research, I would say, was definitely the biggest thing. So um, I'm a programmer. I'm not a teacher. Mm. So for us to be able to actually create a platform like that, we had to go back to actually learn how to teach. Like, what does it really take to teach kids? So we had to work at a different organization, really volunteering our time mm. um, because it was not paid. So yeah, we really yeah. volunteered our time throughout the, the whole time with these organizations uh, to truly learn what is the art of 
teaching kids something mm. and then going from there and what will it take to teach kids coding so going back to that root and truly understand that was the fundamental that we needed and then from there uh we were able to perform the research that we needed okay now we know how to teach kids now the problem we're trying to solve how big is the problem mm -hmm. this is really something that a lot of people are looking for solution for and uh being obsessed about the problem and not the solution was, I would say, the number one thing that I recommend any entrepreneurs uh, that are trying to solve any solution there. Because if you're obsessed about the problem, you are going to find a solution. The solution you think is the solution might not be the solution. Mm. But the more obsessed you are about it, you are going to find what that solution is. And I would say that is what helped us pave the way to where we are today. Yeah. Um Speaking of that problem, right? So I, I keep saying this is self promo. I don't care who's <laughs> self promo. Uh, but I think earlier, like five five months ago, I was coming up with an idea of an app called Ulum, which is an all in one resource platform. Yes, yes, I've heard about I've heard about it. Yes. So I'm glad you had your yes, word is going around. Yes, 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 um, yes. But essentially, this idea I have it on my sketchbook. I sketched it out in the sense that I had all, ten ideas of things I want to solve, mm -hmm. right? But I met with a mentor of mine. Kevin McGinnis, shout yes. out. And he was like, hey, cool ideas, cool solutions, but have you talked to the customer first? Now I went to the customers, which are international students, which are immigrants, and right. asked them what they need. And it come to find out all the solutions that I thought I had, none, of them, exactly. none of them were what, what they're looking for. Exactly. But now I had real data in terms of what they're actually looking for. So now when I pitch the idea, I know exactly what I'm solving. Exactly. And the more I talk to more um, providers or more people who serve that community, they tell me more things. So that way I'm solving what they need, exactly. right? So it's very essential, like you yeah. speaking on that, you know, being able to do that research, right? Right. Um, so for me now, um, let me ask you this. How does your product stand out in the industry, uh, like what's out there already? What is, why, why is yours different? Right. Well, we're for sure not the first in market. Yeah. That's for sure. Those, if you're the only one first in market, that's a problem. <laughs> right. That's right. a problem. We're not the first. However, we are the best though. That's what I'm talking about. And, <laughs> it gotta be. Um, what we provide um, right now, we were able to secure patents. In fact, three patents on wow, okay. Algo, And that's because of the, uh, the invention that we're able to create. Um, there are other platforms out there that do try to teach kids how to code. However, uh, right now, there aren't a lot that are trying to do exactly what and how we are teaching them. So the methodology that we're using to teach kids coding in mm -hmm. a very fun and gamified way, it is something uh, that is new, uh -huh. uh, which is why we're able to secure those patents on it. Yeah, I, I, I'm my kid, whenever I have him, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be able to use Kodago to be able to have a code. Absolutely. Um, so this next question, it's option for you to answer the first part of it, which is how much have you raised and what have you seen to be the most effective way to either pitch your story or raise funds in the ecosystem? Right. We have raised well over six figures so far. Wow, okay. And uh, we've been in business just for the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, 2022 was when we officially launched uh, mm -hmm. the company. Um, the most effective way for us to fundraise, I would say you have to have something that people have to see. When mm -hmm. we first started fundraising, we didn't even have anything that you could see. We only had the idea. And when I say we had the idea, that's literally all we had. We mm. didn't have any picture, nothing for you to see. And of course, people were trying to, you know, sketch it in your own head. And Connect the dots. Exactly. And it's definitely not what, what people thought we were going to build was not what we were envisioning. So making sure you have something that you can actually show to those investors that you're pitching to is going to be uh, extremely helpful. Mm. Um, that one absolutely know your markets mm -hmm. um, and uh, as I said be super obsessed with the problem and not the solution um, that is for sure going to help pave and navigate your way as you speak to these investors and as you fundraise. Sweet so most of our viewers are either early stage founders or people who are want to get into the entrepreneurship industry or understand what's going on in that ecosystem what are some pieces of advice you've gotten or you would like to share to that space and what you've learned from your own journey? Um, research, mm -hmm. research and mm -hmm. research. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's speak okay. on that, speak on that. Absolutely, that's definitely yeah. Yeah, the biggest thing uh, that we, I will 100% advise anyone to do. And go out there and talk to people, you know, um, because as you mentioned earlier, you may have the perfect solution in your head, mm -hmm. but until you actually speak to your uh, intended customers, you really don't know if your solution is indeed the solution they're looking for. Mm. Um, and uh, making sure you build along with the people and not building just for them, build with them so that that way you truly understand exactly where their pain point is mm. and you're actually solving 
the pain point that they have. Mm. Um, um, those would be, I would say, the three main things that I would advise anyone. I know uh, fundraising, especially when you're brand new, is something that a lot of people, a lot of us are obsessed about. And I do know, definitely guilty of that. But when you're building a solution that makes sense, that is actually solving a real problem, the money will come mm -hmm. after it. So mm -hmm. as you are obsessed with where you are trying to solve, everything else will fall in place. Wow. Um, so I know as entrepreneurs, you know, it's juggling 10 things at a time, wearing 10 different hats, um, mental health, right? How do you stay focused? How do you stay balanced with family and everything that's going on around to still stay, stay centered and focused on what you're doing? How do you, what resources do you use or how do you, what steps do you take to get yourself centered in all this? Have a community. Mm. Um, it is going to be extremely important. Um, uh, Definitely, I would say big shout out to Pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, when we first started, I would say the first first few months after we started Codalgo, Pipeline Pathfinder was a group that we joined. It's an entrepreneurship program um, and favors a lot of underrepresented founders. Within that program, we were able to find like-minded founders just like myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, we may all be building different product and different solution, but we are all going through the exact same journey. Mm. So being able to, you know, have the ability to, hey, give a, a call to, hey, Zik, I'm having this problem right now. I can't mm. believe uh, this happened. Like, has it ever happened to you? Mm. And just being able to just give a call to someone that you know that may have gone through the problem or is going yeah. through the exact same problem, yeah. I think has made me centered. Yeah. And that has been uh, extremely helpful. It's like having another family that is not your direct family, but at the same time, they are your family because mm. it is my uh, business family, however you want to call it. Yeah, but they yeah. are uh, another part of my family. And wow. that's been really helpful. Wow. Um, community. I, I'm big on community. I'm yes. big on having people who I can call on and ask questions. Yes. Um, because I think one person's, like I always say this, maybe people don't hear this enough, but each one teach one, right? Yes. Um, the knowledge of someone has already like, had experience yes. can help you go further, right? Exactly. Um, if you don't have that, you're pretty much all alone. Exactly. And most times I get so, I get so obsessed about things I'm working on that I, I also get frantic about it. Right. But sometimes this, the solution I'm trying to find is right next door to just one text exactly. away from me. Exactly. Yeah, right. I learned pretty quickly to not try to reinvent the wheel. Mm. If someone already has a solution, males will give them a ring and get that solution from them. That's right. Um, but I definitely was like that as well when I first started. Um, and that, it, it, it can be a very lonely place to put yourself into yes, and yes. can really impact and have a lot of, you know, impact on your mental health. Mm. But as I started going out there and joining these different groups, I have found it extremely beneficial, extremely helpful that, wait a minute, you're also going to that same problem? What did you do? Or you went to that same problem? Mm, Tell mm, me how you went. You, mm. you, you know, you navigated through that problem. And um, that has been beyond helpful, knowing that. You're not alone, even though you are doing it alone, but you are not alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. Um, so as we're coming towards the end of the show, I want to ask you this. Um, I know personally for me, looking back to who I was as a kid back in Nigeria, I was definitely having a lot of fun. I didn't care about nothing. <laughs> um, I wasn't really interested about, you know, being um, this exemplary person. But looking at what I've done so far, what I've been doing, I'm like, I don't even, it's not the same person. Like mm -hmm. there's so much growth that has happened. Um, what has, what does that look like for you? Looking back, like what has your journey been about for you? It has been uh, a very interesting journey and long journey. I came here very young. Mm. I came here uh, at the age of 16 wow. by myself. My wow. parents were like this. Wow. Good luck. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, for me, straight graduated from high school. Wow. 16 yes. all alone. Yes. All Jesus, alone. Jesus. That just didn't hear. I just, <laughs> took me a minute. Took me a minute. Like, wait, 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 wait a minute. My brain did not connect 20, 16. Okay. Yes. Wow. 16 all, all alone. alone. Yes. And, I mean, they dropped me off the airport and that was pretty but much it. At the airport though, they had to fly all the way. How many hours? Like 17 hours? Something yeah. like that? Yes. Yes. Pretty long flight. Um, came here. Wow. Uh, Audacious. And this young girl trying to figure out what is United States, what do we have here? Wow. Uh, I came here, you know, 16. education um, to try to get the best education that you can. Yeah. Um, got it. And hey. of course, 
initial goal was to get it, go back home and uh, create something over there. And then I found more opportunities to actually develop something here mm. and then said, um, let's hold off on me coming back home now. Let me see what I can actually build here. Yeah, yeah. But definitely didn't see myself being where I am today. Mm. Um, I would say that I have grown tremendously. Uh, I mean, both personally, professionally, um, all of the above, if you want to name it. Mm. Um, and I'm beyond grateful for the opportunity yeah. that I had that because I do know there are a lot of people that would like to be in the same shoes that I am. Exactly. Um, and I am I am blessed and grateful to be where I am today. Um, will I have taught that Triumphia back when she was 16 would be where she is today talking to the one and only wonderful Zeke? Well, Absolutely who that? not. Well, who, who that? I don't know who you're talking about. Go ahead. <laughs> So definitely grateful yeah. uh, for the opportunity uh, and grateful and, and blessed, beyond yeah. blessed to be here today. Uh, man, life is so interesting, you know. It it's so interesting because just looking back to at 16, dang, that's a, shoot, I can't even imagine. At 16, I was, uh, I know. I was, See, I was. The me today wow. will have said, I'm not going anywhere at 16. <laughs> yeah. Like, just looking back. That's scary. But hey, my parent, they, uh, they trusted me and they say, ah, we think you can do it, so good luck, go. Yeah, and I yeah. said, okay, let's go. What does and your family think now, everyone? What do I they hope think? they're proud of me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to at least lay some type of example. Yes. Uh, to my, you know, the rest of my siblings, I do have three brothers. Okay. Um, and uh, of course, they're all pursuing computer science. Anytime they ask me, what do you want me to do? I don't know what you want to do, I don't know. Yeah. The only thing I know is computer science. So yeah. they're all computer science people now. But um, I hope they're proud um, as I uh, try to lay an example of Forward. what you know, what it can potentially look like if you do put in the work. Yeah, your bar is really high because at, at 16, <laughs> my sister left here and went to the U.S. at 16. Oh. <laughs> um, but if you haven't heard this from anyone else, I'm telling you, I'm really proud of you. Thank you. Because each time I see you in any in, in networking event or doing your thing, I'm always, I got to come say hi, like, hey, Thank good you. to see you. Always good to see you because what you're building, I think it's going to be so impactful. Um, and the way of thinking about it, especially the way the impact you have by the your why right. is so unique because you're going to affect so millions of lives in the future. Because at the kids that age where they are playing these games right. are very foundational for their character exactly. who they become. Right. Exactly. Um, I remember at 16, I wasn't in the U.S. I wasn't even thinking <laughs> about I was thinking I knew I wanted to go to the U.S., but I was still having fun. I was still. Living, very, your life. living my life. <laughs> I was very present in video, in the game centers. I was spending a lot of my savings in game centers. So that's where I took my practice. That's why I said when I'm good at FIFA, there pull up, go. I'm gonna let you know. There you but go. that's where I spent my most of my investment at, right? But it's like those were my foundational years, right? Right. Um, it took a lot of time for me to reinvent who I was then right. in terms of grow out of that. Right. Right. So you are getting kids at a very early stage where they need those skills exactly. to help them succeed. Exactly. So thank you for what you're doing because it's very important. Um, no and as we're going towards the end of the show, what would you like to say to, you know, a young girl out there who is trying to figure it out for themselves or who is trying to get into the tech space or is trying to start, who needs inspiration, who needs, you know, to hear from you who have been through this journey of taking this huge risk? What do you want to say out there to them watching today? You can do it. Yeah. Um, uh, just take the first step because we all have great ideas, but it's only going to be an idea and always going to be an idea mm. unless you actually Take the first step. Yeah. Um, believe in yourself and understand that there are other people just like myself that were able to do it. And if I was able to do it, so can you. So yeah. go out there and kick. No, that's 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 it. I mean, that's really it because it just takes one action. Absolutely. You know, I think um, if anyone told me that I would be in the U.S. like talking to people, I'm a very big introvert. People don't know that. Um, Talking to people, giving speeches are my worst. You could have fooled me. <laughs> so I'm telling you, like, those are my worst fears when I was growing up. Like right. my worst nightmares. Right, right. But I had to grow fast. And I know right. you had to grow fast. Coming right. from a different country, you always have to grow fast because Absolutely. it's, it's, it's um, grow or die. Yes. And if you don't think fast, you, you don't grow fast, you get... Stagnant. Yes. Right. And you you, you completely start stop growing, right? Absolutely. Um, so with that being said, thank you so much, Triumphia, for thank what you, you do. Thank no you for coming problem. on the show. Um, mm -hmm. And I hope your story has inspired a lot of people who are watching today to take that first step because Absolutely. that's all it really takes. And then you learn from there because, hey, the truth is we're all figuring it out. I agree. 
No one yeah. has it figured out. Absolutely. We're all trying to figure this out. Step by step. Absolutely. Um, so thank you again for coming on the show. Thank, thank you, you for Thanks joining for us today. Um, for those who are watching from home, you know what time it is. We're at a sign out. Do what you got to do. Like, share, let people know, you know, you know, you know, whatever you do, support us. We love you. You love us. Um, but it's been a nice entrepreneur episode. Like we always promise we're bringing the real people with real stories, founders who do amazing stuff in the city. I'll see you in this episode. Bye bye for now.